Yeah, and so you really need to be trusted. Yeah. Now I'd like to repeat what he said, and I'd like to have you tell me back what he heard. So yeah, I did have to do a little bit of cleaning up the mess before I could. See, every image that she's heard in the past, every criticism, which she'd heard for years, she was irresponsible. Now it's hard for her to hear the need that was being expressed all along behind that. So finally I get her to hear his feelings and needs. Okay, we're halfway through. Now this much took me an hour. Okay, now I try to help her. So could you tell me now what your needs are? Well, just because I made them, you know, I overdrew the checkbook, you know, before, you know, that doesn't mean I'm going to do it again. He said, yes, but we could be out of money, but, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <sighs> so, you're really frustrated, and if I hear you correctly, you have a need for some trust that you can learn how to handle money. Yes. Okay. Husband, could you tell me that? Yeah, and we'll be out of money by then. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Can you tell me what her feelings and needs are? Would you like me to repeat it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> About three more repetitions. He hears her. It didn't take 20 minutes to resolve it at that point, you see. Whenever I go into situations where there's been a lot of conflict, I don't even allow the people to talk about strategies until they're connected at the heart level. I was working with two tribes in northern Nigeria. One Christian tribe and one Muslim tribe. One quarter of the population killed in one year. One out of four people killed. Took my colleague six months to get them to agree to come into a room together. During that six months, 60 people killed. So by the time it took us to get everybody into a room together, 60 people killed. So now it's not a husband and wife I have on opposite ends of the table, but the chiefs of two tribes. I start the same way I did with the husband and wife. Uh, I'd like to hear you express your needs. What needs are not being met? I'm pretty much guessing ahead of time I'm not going to get an answer to my question. Because if people had been communicating at the need level, there wouldn't have been 100 people dead. So I wasn't surprised when instead of getting an answer to my question, I got this back. These people are murderers! Well, you've been trying to dominate us! See, I ask for needs, I get back uh, diagnoses. So just as with the husband and wife, I put my ears on, and translate each statement into a need, get the other side to hear it. It wasn't easy. I had to do a lot of first aid empathy to get, because like when I got this person behind murderers was, so you are frightened of any use of violence to resolve conflict and want some agreement to resolve it in some other way? Yes, exactly. Okay. Could you say back what you heard? Then why did you kill my child? So it wasn't too easy. But anyway, after about, it took about an hour again for me to get one need expressed, one need heard, one need expressed, one need heard. And one of the chiefs who hadn't spoken yet said to me, if we know how to communicate this way, we won't have to kill each other. See, it just took one hour to see that if they can just stay connected at the heart level, nobody has to die. There's plenty of resources for getting everybody's needs met. But we lose that when we get up into our head and start to analyze wrongness. Yes? But does this need understanding develop into a, um, well, sort of a, not necessarily a give and take, but where one person would give in to the other person's no, need? No, no compromising in giraffe. Not necessary to compromise. Everybody's needs can get met. Nobody has to give in. Nobody has to give anything up. Because I agree with you, I have to say, and especially when it comes to doing things for other people, because if you, my theory is, is that if I do something for, for someone else, that gives a person power for, over me. Well, Whereas if I, I do would it put for it myself, this way. I if can... you do anything that involves giving in, both people pay for it. Nothing has been resolved. It's going to create problems. So is there a needs dialogue or needs literacy you mentioned that uh, I have the need in my need literacy in my book. And if you want to develop your need literacy, I suggest you do the following activity. First, identify your most 
frequently used jackals, the ones you use the most, and next, the ones you're the most afraid of. Do it this way. First, on a list, make a list of how you talk to yourself when you're less than perfect. And uh, those of you over here who said you're perfect, you'll have to skip this part of it. But, <laughs> but for those of you who aren't perfect, make a list. Of what, how are you most likely to speak to yourself when you're less than perfect? So that's jackal li uh, li list number one. Next, make a second list. What are the jackal messages that go on in you when you are angry at others? So when you're judging others and are, and are angry, what are you most likely to be saying to yourself or out loud about the other person. So that's jackal le uh, list number two. Jackal list number three. List those things that when other people say it, at the moment, you respond to defensively or aggressively. And put on that list things that you have been so afraid that people might think it of you, that you've become a nice dead person to avoid it. So in other words, put into that list not only what people have said that got you defensive, but things you're scared of they might say. Okay, now do this exercise to build your need literacy. Go back over that first list where you, what you say to yourself when you're less than perfect. Now, for each judgment, think of what might been the stimulus for it. See, you've got to relate each of these to a specific context. So. Say to yourself, let's say the first thing is you have in your list, list number one, what a dumb thing to do. Okay. Think of what you might have done to stimulate that. Okay. Then put on giraffe ears and hear the need behind stupid. See, I'm saying that all judgments are tragic expressions of unmet needs. So ask yourself, if I, when I say that to myself in that situation, how stupid. What need am I expressing through that judgment? What need of mine isn't getting met? And here's where you can use the list in my, my book. If you can't come up with it yourself, just look through the list and your body will tell you when you're getting close. Really, because, oh yeah, 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 that's what my need is. See, the need comes much closer to the truth than any judgment you make of yourself. So do that for every item on the list. Second, what you tell yourself when you're angry at others. Again, identify concretely what the other person might have done to stimulate this. Then ask yourself this question. When I judge people as idiots for doing that, what need of mine was not being met in that situation? Again, try to guess it without my list, but if you can't find it, look through my list to find one that comes closest. The third list, what others m say to you to get you defensive. Practice putting on the giraffe ears. Imagine what you did to stimulate it. And in that situation, guess what the other person's needs were that weren't getting met. So you see, it's just learning a new language. Learning for every time there are these jackal judgments to as quickly as possible to bring yourself back to life. Or more specifically, Connect to needs. Needs are life. Yes? Um, my question is, I never know what to do when I know I'm never going to meet another person's, you know, expectations of me. Yes. Well, first of all, never hear an expectation. That's, that's thoughts. Expectations are thoughts. Don't hear it.